Grant here. Hi, this is Elgrim. And today we're going to be testing Gambison out. Yeah. I know uh, there's very few videos online testing Gambison. I mean, you don't see it very often. No, Mike Lodes has one that actually stops a warbow with a proper amount of Gambison. Yep. That's period. Uh, we've stopped bow arrows with it. True, we've true. stopped bows with it. I mean, powerful bows with enough Gambison. Remember, too much Gambison, yes, you could stop something, but it you might be so much you're going to be too hot. You overheat, limit your mobility, too. And you, yeah, and you can't put it in certain areas. You can have That's it true. maybe over your chest, big, thick layers. But like you could have it under your armpits or too much behind your knees. Correct, correct. Any any area where you need to be able to move or bend elbows. So those yeah. will always be niches, even in Gambison. That's true. Right, Very and true. they're still difficult to get through. Even yeah. wider layers, which we're going to test about a medium layer of Gambison today. Yeah. We, we stopped a... Uh, a uh, 50 pound bow with it, with a bodkin point. Stopped it easily, it's bounced out. You yeah, can go in yeah. and do a piece of ballistic shoulder. Well, today we're going to test it with some different sword style cuts. Uh, we're going to try the uh, cast blow. We're going to try some push cuts, draw cuts, stepping cuts. And we're going to see what works more effectively on the gambeson and how well it, def it defends against that. And yeah. That's right. Well, and, I mean, and uh, we're, it's just today's just kind of a, a, a fun with Gambison day. Yeah, and it's my belief that Gambison is the primary armor. Just like modern uh, Kevlar, uh, you've always had Gambison. To the always. earliest civilization of Mesopotamia, they revered Lennox. They certainly did. Right. So the idea is, I believe it was also because of its protective qualities and how many layers you could wear to protect yourself in battle. Because certainly they didn't want to put a bunch of layers on. Oh, the no. Hot yeah, no. No, they didn't even need it. They could walk around naked and didn't have any. But again, this a, yeah. you know, as we've said so many times before, this affects what kind of weapons and armor you use in lieu of not having Gambison or having a lot of Gambison. Uh, you know, what level do you wear of that? Right, and the idea of Gambison also is it's almost a primary armor is then other stuff goes over it. You put your plate over it. Yeah. Unless the plate's strong enough to protect you, which yes, they got some plate that was strong enough to protect you without Gambison armor, depending on how the harness sets on you. Yeah. But any other flexible armor always has Gambison under it. That's absolutely almost true. Almost always. Male's almost useless without it because... You have no protection from getting your ribs broken okay. uh, from anything. Like, we're going to test that out as well today. Yeah, yeah, we'll do some uh, breaking more like we did in our other video. More extremely, though. Yeah, yeah. So let's get started. We'll try different cuts, maybe try some thrusts with our bronze spears Ooh. and see how well it behaves against Gambus because they were certainly using it at that time period as much as they were using it at the time period that they used these 10th century swords here. Gambus was still in yep. use, but covered with a lot of mail. Yep. Yeah. So, so let's, let's do it. Let's get this going. Hell yeah. Y'all. We have our brick set up, and this time not to break. It's not set up like in a martial arts demo with two pieces here in an optimal position like a clavicle or something, if it was in the proper position to break. And what we're going to do is put our 20% ballistic gelatin over it, which is very, very tough. It's about the thickness of flesh would be over bone. And uh, we're going to go ahead and put the gambeson that we used with our uh, bow test recently on top of it. And this stopped an actual 50-pound hunting bow with a bodkin point. So it's pretty good gambeson. Uh, I don't think you can cut through it easily. You might cut into it, but I doubt you'll cut clean through it. Uh, we're going to use a cast blow to see if this sword here can actually send any energy through it and damage the brick in any way. That's our whole idea at the moment. Oh! That was gnarly, dude! What it did to With all that bounce, that thing bounced three inches off that platform. Uh, most and a human body don't bounce that much on and an we impact. we cut our gambeson, like as we assumed it would cut some. But we didn't cut all the way through our gambeson. We actually did not cut all the way through the gambeson. But the brick was still split from the transfer of energy, and the flesh still split open. So that's telling me that even with padding and this, and a sword that's a little under, I guess about three pounds, with a proper blow, uh, a cast blow, it could still be damaging to someone wearing multiple layers of gambeson, or possibly even mail, because we've done that already as well. The force carries through. Okay, we've got our gambeson now on a bottle, like you've seen us cut in other videos, uh, kind of representing a flesh analog, just something that gives, it gives a lot. As you can see, like a belly would. And this is our gambeson. We're going to see if we can possibly cut into it with different techniques. The first one, I'll try a uh, slicing type thing, not a uh, hacking style thing, because I think it's going to take a slicing type thing that's going to go through. But I'm going to use it with a kind of a cast blow, but uh, more add a slice to it, kind of like you do with a uh, uh, 
whole wall or something or a saber. See what it does. Whoo! Yeah! I mean, you hit it, dude. You hit it. You hit it good. That did not cut. Let's go ahead and try that with more of a cast blow style. I'm going to cast it down at an angle and try to cut with whatever hits and see what that does. No cut whatsoever. Right here. Okay, I'm going to step in and cut using my body and draw and see what happens with the cut. Woo! Oh, I almost knocked it over. I know, man. You hit like an ogre. We're not cutting this material, and this is a very sharp blade. Right, I will try do the same kind of thing with a cast blow and a draw again. Let's try it one more time. Give it hell! Damn! We don't want to break our bottle that way, but we're still not cutting through the canvases. That's why I still believe cloth is probably the earliest textiles form of armor that was extremely effective, yeah. and people were trying to find ways to uh, defeat it. And it's not the edge. Well, the cast the blow would line. still break bones underneath that armor, but it's about cutting. Started. We're talking about cutting here. Can you cut it? Right. Let's try some different ideas. Oh, it's going to push it over that way. <laughs> Here, you want somebody to hold it firm? No, no, I'm good. Let me try again. Here, I'll hold the barrel. <laughs> Not doing nothing, huh? That's a no. sharp edge. Man, you're barely doing it. I mean, just barely cutting it. I don't even with think that you're... much give on the bottle, what it is, it's bouncing. I don't think it's going to be able to cut it with bounce. Let's try a tip shot. Oh, yeah! The tip did it. The tip went all the way through. Jeez. That is... So anything but a tip shot is not going to make it through that many layers of gambeson. The tip shot actually did it. I hit with this much of the sword and sliced through. And that was more of a cast style blow that I used with the tip. Although not impressive when we didn't cut completely through the bottle, uh, it's very impressive going through this amount of material. So you got to catch cutting. it with the, the very tip. Most certainly. That was epic, bro. See if we can replicate it before all our stuff runs out. Maybe Go for it. it. Go for it. Oh. We were unable to replicate it because we lost too much of the um, the rigidity the from the yeah the rigidity. It took it took force. What I'm explaining is it took that cast type blow with the tip shot to cut through here because it took the force of the acceleration and speed to cut it in time before it could bounce. That's there you basically go. what we're getting at. That's right. And we had to use this portion of the blade, not this portion of the blade. And we were still, even with this material here, we were unable to push hard enough without knocking it off the pedestal to be able to cut through. So that caused this to compress and cut through that many layers. Pretty I'm impressive. I'm extremely impressed. That awesome. is a lot of gambeson and padding. We have padding and layers of cloth, different types. Hell yeah. That was, that was epic, dude. Epic. It's almost a half an inch thick. That's, uh, yeah, that's like what stopped the 50 pound bow with a bodkin. So the sword could possibly go through. So, I'm here with my uh, Type 13 sword, and uh, the hand and half sword has more of a taper to it for uh, thrusting or for like niche hunting. But this is a little blade heavy and stuff, so a lot of it has to do with those tip shots like Thran demonstrated work very well against Gambison. Now, we're going to test this blade in a thrusting fashion through Gambison and through the water jug uh, medium that we have set up. So, let's see what happens. Ah! go under it. No, actually I went through it. Through Gambison at all. It's awfully low. <laughs> it doesn't matter how low it is. If it's a kill, it's a kill. Right. Yeah, it is. It's good. You did. You went playing through the Gambison. We should we should try it again a little higher up. This time. All right. Yeah. Sounds good to me. You cut through the bottom of the bottle as well. I love that. Oh yeah, I did split the bottom of it. How do you like that? 
and I went through the Gambeson. Pretty awesome. Woo! That first uh, thrust was pretty good, but we thought it was a little low, so I'm going to take a second one, try and get a little higher, and see if that changes anything at all. But I doubt it. I think it's going to be about the same. So let's see what happens. Ah! There's lots of layers of Gambeson. I wouldn't have cut it anyway, but it's still fun to do. Yeah, that went through a lot of layers. Through every single layer, yeah. Every single layer. Oh, oh wow. You, you cut the back because it turned and you hit it. So, yeah, you did cut it, but you didn't hit the gams. Oh, well, the thrust, like we thought, is much easier to pierce through that many layers of gambeson than, uh, than using a cut. Well, those, the cast blows seem to perform very well when you use the tip of it to cut through the gams. So I'm going to go ahead and try out the spear today, and we'll try a couple of different methods with it and see what's uh, more effective. We've got the same rig here, the same amount of gambeson strapped through our bottle that has a lot of bounce to give to it, much like a gut would have. was the punching method. That wasn't really all that impressive to be honest I don't with you. Think so. It hit a little bit high, but try it one more time just to make sure it's not me. Oh we got a hole in it. And it split with Yeah it split after the hole though. Yeah but we did get a hole in it. We'll turn it where people can see. Oh you can actually see the turn. hole right here. The split was actually from the impact of the weight. Didn't go very deep. I'd say it only went about that deep. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do the overarm throwing slide. It's kind of like the cast blow or a thrown blow. That's why I say throwing and add that to it. Because you're actually accelerating the spear, per se, and not stepping with the body and planting it. We'll see what it can do. Oh! Did it make it through our gambeson? I believe it did. Surely did, and we've got our gaping wound. Woo! Not bad. Not bad. Let me try hitting it one more time. Give it another awesome. good shot. Oh! Ha oh! <laughs> ha! And right that was more, back. more penetration. Oh yeah, you hit the back. It's coming out the That's back. That's awesome. Side. Through all that gambeson. That was sweet, man. Freaking awesome. Oh. I hope there's enough left in there for me to get a good throw When in I there. did the punching style technique, I was unable to get through easily. Yeah, I know, man. That was pretty cool. Let's see what I can do with a throw. Oh, oh yeah! Move over, move over, move over. Guys, throw a little low, throw a little low. Oh! oh. It had all its rigidity gone, so yeah. that doesn't count. Ah. Beautiful, beautiful though. Nice! But even with the, when the rigidity is lost, if you notice, the spear point still was able to go through with the throw. Which yeah. the throw should have a better chance of going through over all of those. No doubt. No doubt about it. Man, that was a lot of fun today testing that Gambeson Thrand. I think we proved a lot today. Gambeson can protect you. I think early period, that Gambeson, or actual uh, linen fabric, was so valuable, not because of the textiles and the fashion and how beautiful it made people. Although they did seem oh, to do that well, yes. yeah almost certainly but there was a dual purpose to it part of it was protecting yourself not just from the elements but from enemies right because in some of the areas you don't even uh see need for that much cloth but they still revere it it's something mm -hmm. that's valuable that's multiple right. layers of cloth can stop an edged weapon they that's can right. pad you with proper padding mixed in to protect you from the blow but if the blow is too extreme for the amount of gambeson you have as we've seen today with we've... thrusts and tip cuts Right, it can cut it, or with the just sheer impact of even just a, a lightly, a little lighter than a three-pound sword. Yeah, yeah, well, the uh, impact. Yeah, just bang. We broke oh, a yeah. brick with it, set up where it was on. It was set yeah. up to be protected. Oh yeah, I see what you say. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So if you're hitting bone under gambus, and that's it, it's gone. It's possible to break it depending on how much yeah. you have over it, how that's it true. hits, and whether it Very gives, true. and if you're moving into it, and mm -hmm. 
all this kind of thing. So that's right. I think during the early 12th and 13th century in uh, uh, armored combat, that yes, they would have thrown cast blows, like Roland Wars Eka believes they did, even the Viking era and yep. the Migration yep. era. You're absolutely and right. And not only because the tip cuts could cut through fabric if they were going to do a lot of cutting, but also if they could not cut through it, it might still injure the guy anyway, wind him, knock the air out of him, break a rib. It's way worse damage than you'd get from an average blow from That's a fist, hand, or foot. No, no doubt about it. No doubt about yeah. it. Absolutely. So Gamison is a viable armor, but it has its weaknesses. But that changed those weapon systems and the way people fought. And the rigidity. Also, you see on the bottle, when you get a hole in it, the same cut that worked well before it didn't work well before. So that wouldn't be a hole in a person, but that might be the way he moved or stepped. Mm -hmm. That's or he was true. trying to avoid you in combat as it nicked it. Again, like I said, yeah. it changed the, the way weapon systems. Right, weapon cutting. systems were built around Gambison. The way you used, what kind of shield you used, what kind of sword you used, what kind of spear you used, what styles you used, what did you step offline to what avoid the thrust. What else they added? Plate, uh, whether mm -hmm. it be bronze plate, uh, whether it be a lamellé scale armor type thing yep. system. Uh, like the Japanese. But or, things developed around right. what you had at the time. And the niches. Niches are very important. Yeah. If you can get a niche or an open spot on somebody where they're totally vulnerable and it can kill them outright, yes, go for that. We're not trying to ever say that people beat on armor just to beat on armor. Nope. If you can get in, If you can get avoid in. hitting a helmet with a very expensive sword and hit the guy in the neck, that's what you're going to aim for. You're not going to aim for his, You're absolutely right. You're not going to aim for a hardened that material that might knock him silly or might not do anything for you and waste your, your attack. Yeah. Well, this is a great idea, yeah. Thrand. I had a blast. I hope all of you had a great time. If you like this video, make sure to like it. Uh, comment down below. We love your comments and suggestions and criticisms. Uh, also, uh, be sure to subscribe to our channel, YouTube channel, Thane Thrand. Uh, we love subscribers, guys, and you're the ones that help make this happen. Uh, be sure to uh, like our like page on Facebook. That's the uh, Thrandon Elgermer's uh, Well Remembrance. Uh, also, we have our fan page, which is a closed group. It's the Thane Thrand YouTube Boat Crew, where you get exclusive content, uh, uh, set stills, uh, private videos. You also get to have uh, discussions with Thrand and I personally about all things anachronistic, living history, uh, blacksmithing, weaponsmithing, weapon arts. If we don't know the answer, there's somebody in the crew we can refer you to, definitely. Most so, certainly. We have a good crew. Yeah. That's, yo, yeah. And uh, so, guys, do that for us. And uh, also, make sure you donate at www.patreon.com slash Thrand or at our PayPal, which is uh, uh, ThaneThrand at yahoo.com. That is the actual ID, and that's also where you can send an email letting us know uh, what you want us to do with the money. That's right. So, uh, thank you for joining us today. Stick around for more awesome episodes. Farewell. Farewell.